welcome all to the People's Channel, Orchids for Dummies. Now, because of the beautiful Phalaenopsis Orchid, we now have Fal Pals, and I am Fal Pal Durrell. So, grab a snack, come on back, honey, let's have a good time because it's update number. Now, Fal Pals, this is my beautiful baby Pinky. Um, I have absolutely no idea what happened. If you go back to my um, Orchid Whisperer video, then you will see that she had a leaf that was completely um, pink or something other than yellow. And I said I was going to leave her alone. Well, honey, the whole Orchid is now dead. Now, the only thing that it would be um, determining factors is going to be that leaf shine video. Remember I did the leaf shine video. Um, I used this Phalaenopsis pinky um, with the mayo. And we were just talking about how the mayo had appeared to be the best one out of the bunch. Now, that was in update six. She was perfectly fine. Now, update seven, she's completely dead. I don't want to examine the pot because I did tell you that this is the media from repotme.com. Those will be the only contributory factors in the death of my Phalaenopsis orchid. Now, I would leave, I would not go so far to say that it's because of the media. I will go ahead and say that it was due to me using mayo. Now, Fal Pals, if you have successfully used mayo on your Phalaenopsis orchid as a leaf cleaner, please let us know in the comment box below because I am now under the impression that I want nothing to do with mayo when it comes to my Phalaenopsis orchid. This was the second orchid that I ever purchased, so it does hit home. No, it's not my baby blue, but I mean, something like this could have easily happened to my baby blue. That's one of the reasons you want to make sure that when you are doing experiments, that you want to have your Phalaenopsis that are specifically set to experiment on. Now, stay tuned. Alrighty, Fally Pallies. <laughs> so, first up on the list is going to be my beautiful pothos because these are actually the first plants that I started growing. So, the problem child of the bunch is going to be my neon pothos. Okay? My neon pothos, um, this is all that is left. I did manage to see some new growth somewhere. It's one of these leaves, but um, nothing is happening with it. Um, I believe this is called a money plant. As you can see, she's very dusty. That's why I'm telling you guys to clean your Phalaenopsis leaves, okay? If you don't know how to clean them, I will leave that video in the info card above, baby. Yes, I will. Now, this is pretty much the baby of the bunch. Now, I love the way she is growing. She is growing up, up, and beyond, honey. And, I mean, have you seen such a bushier pothos put together? So, it's been a year since I've had these guys. So, it's going to be time for me to repot them. Because they are not, their leaf color isn't the same that it used to be. Which was that deep green, really good, healthy looking color. And this is my first plant, honey. Yes, honey. This is symbolic of my relationship with my husband, honey. Yes, honey. Yes, honey. Yes. Look at this hang time. Go back to my first video, honey. Go back to my first video, honey. She had no hang time. But yes, darling. <laughs> yes, honey. Stay tuned. All right, so let's talk about the Phalaenopsis, honey. And starting off with the ones that are giving me the least amount of problems. This is going to be my favorite Fal Pals, my beautiful baby Blue. You know, I repotted her in a whole different type of media and a whole different type of pot. And I am seeing roots in this pot. And um, she is now in her vegetative state growing new roots, and hopefully soon, she will be growing new leaves, Fal Pals, okay? So, my Phalaenopsis Blue is doing just fine, okay? 
before I put her back before my new um my new subscribers. Now she is pulling nutrients out of this leaf because as you can see it's very translucent and it's also very wrinkly okay but she's doing it the appropriate way so these two leaves up here because the leaf um before this one is a lot smaller that lets you know that this is a phalaenopsis orchid that has been set back okay now this is my phalaenopsis rick l and um he is not in the best for show, but definitely one of the least problematic phalaenopsis that I have on hand right now. Now, as I told you, he had some roots at the bottom of the pot that were dying. Eventually, I am going to get to repotting this and putting it into some fresh media. Now that I know how to fertilize properly my orchids that I am growing in New Zealand sphagnum moss. Now, if you want to know how to... um properly fertilize your orchids um, between bark and sphagnum moss. Honey, I would leave that info card above. Yes, ma'am. Now, stay tuned. Okay, foul pal. So, these are some of the phalaenopsis orchids that I am growing in bark. Now, I know you might say, well, this looks like a healthy phalaenopsis orchid, and he is doing just fine. However, he does not have any roots at all. He is going his, to do his best to start popping out new roots for me, okay? Okay, but um, he is doing okay, but he does need roots. So that's why I didn't feature him with the other phalaenopsis. Now, this is one of my phalaenopsis that were sent from me from my foul pal, Danielle. Danielle, thank you so much. Um, actually, <laughs> she looks a lot better. Okay, she looks better. As you can see, the leaves are stiff. She was completely dehydrated. If you want to know how this phalaenopsis looked a few weeks ago, I will leave a video in an info card above, honey, the unboxing from Ohio, darling. But as you guys can see, she is still has that new leaf. Hopefully, she will finish producing. This leaf is not ready to come off. When the leaf is ready to come off, it will just come completely off. You will not have to tug on it at all. Such as my Phalaenopsis pinky that just passed away. Okay? So, next up on the list, darling. Next up on the list is this miniature phalaenopsis that I have not done anything with, honey. Okay, you can see the flower stalks have died back. If you guys don't know when to properly cut the stalk of a phalaenopsis orchid, I will leave that information in a video card above. But also, as you can see, this is a um, great example. Also, it's a lot of mold growing on here. Now, foul pals, this is going to be the white mold, and I really don't want to touch this stuff to make it really get a good zoom in, and also, I don't want to scare myself, but that's going to be some white mold. Um, this phalaenopsis, I haven't done anything to in about a month, actually, and um, honey, she's still in here hanging on, so I am going to practice on trying to revive her if she can maintain herself for the long period of time that it's taking me to do something about it. All right, foul pals, next up is going to be my phalaenopsis in water culture. Stay tuned. Did you know Orchids for Dummies is a place where you can get your life? <laughs> yes! So these are my orchids that I have in my north facing window. And two of these orchids are going to be from that unboxing video from my foul pal Danielle. And this is a Phalaenopsis orchid that she gave me that did have some roots that she did say was a problem child. Um, it was completely dehydrated. Um, I have it growing in the solo cup. Um, lightly packed with sphagnum moss. My phalaenopsis orchid that Danielle gave me will be just fine, honey. The leaves have perked up. Everything is on the up and up with this one. 
Now, this orchid right here, I'm interested to see what will happen. Danielle, you know the condition that this orchid was in once you sent it to me. My foul pals, I want you to know what this orchid looked like when she gave it to me. Um, the leaves have definitely plumped up, perked up. It did, however, drop a leaf, but it has these two little little leaves right here. This is going to be a leaf that was set back. Um, this, is, this is as big as it will get. And this one right here, honey, I don't know, but this is definitely a test. I have it in this pot right here because when it comes to spagna moss, um, you want something that is going to be very great, greatly ventilated. And this right here lets the moss dry out in about four days max, but I will wait until seven days before I water it again, okay? Now, my dendrobium, honey, she has been in this window. You guys have seen her in other videos. I have not done anything to her, um, but we are going to do a repotting of this. Um, we are going to try to save this dendrobium, um, so stay tuned for a future video Dealing with this, this is going to be a very, very busy time, honey, the month of May. So all of my foul pals, I just want you guys to stay tuned, honey. I know that this update video is long, but honey, this is my heart, and I want you guys to know that the proof is going to be in the pudding. Please feel free to continue to send me orchids. Honey, I now have Cash App. So if you would like to sponsor me for me to be able to continue being on the highways and the byway. Been on the highways and the byway. Honey, please. Look. Hit me up, baby. Hit me up. Now stay tuned. Hey, pals, this is my dear darling, Fal Maxine. And after my last video, when I found out that she was sickly, the blooms on it just halted, foul pals. They are still in the same formation that they were in when they were still in good health. Now, if you haven't seen that video, I will leave a link in the description box below. Also, an info card because that's great to know that just because you have these beautiful blooms, honey, does not mean that your Phalaenopsis orchid is in its best of health. And after I last watered her, after switching out the pot, I left her alone. And I come back to find this yellow leaf that, okay, another leaf has fallen off. This orchid is pretty much going to be a garner, okay? So, Fal Pal Maxine, darling, I am sorry, honey, I am still learning. Those grocery store Phalaenopsis orchids are not the ones that I want to welcome into my home and to name my Fal Pals after. Now, however, many of you are starting to send me orchids. So, I have some orchids on the way from a dear foul pal from Alabama as well. His name or channel is called Artwork. Okay, Artwork. I will leave, I will leave his information below. But stay tuned, foul pal. Foul pals, I will put it to the test because after I get my Phalaenopsis orchids from Redlands, every time I go to an orchid show, of course, I would love a Phalaenopsis orchid, but then you see all of those beautiful new orchids like my Miltonia, and you just can't resist, especially knowing that the Phalaenopsis orchids are the drama queens. Now, many of you would try to save this orchid, but because I have the Redlands coming up, and um, this was only an orchid that I purchased to experiment to see if I left it alone. Oh, oh. Okay, okay, I gotta go. I don't like scary stuff like this, so I'm going to put this in the trash. I'm sorry, Maxine. I'm sorry, darling. I will find another orchid and name name it after you properly, honey. There's nothing that I did wrong to this orchid other than it was already sick. It was in bloom. It had so many different blooming spikes, 
and it had that new leaf coming out as well. Anytime that you have an orchid doing all three things that it should be doing in different seasons at the same time, it's going to be an indicator that something is wrong with your Phalaenopsis orchid. Now, I am doing my best to show you guys and myself <laughs> how to purchase a adequate Phalaenopsis orchid that will thrive in your living arrangements. And I will already say that I guarantee you, and this is quoted by Orchid Diva, that the orchids that you get from these orchid competitions and orchid shows are going to be orchids that were grown in a home or a greenhouse versus grown in a manufacturing plant. So I want you guys to be on alert, foul pals. I just want to assure you that it is not me, honey. I did not do anything wrong with this, and I'm not on that saving Phalaenopsis orchid level yet, especially if I know that um, this had bugs in it and everything, foul pals. So, honey, stay tuned. This is um, my um, Phalaenopsis that was in spike and this and that. And I tried to save her by having some moss at the bottom and keeping it moist. I ended up letting the um, moss get too wet. And also, um, I decided that this is not going to be the best setup um, to grow it in moss. So, we learned from my mistakes, but I'm throwing her out. So, don't give me all of that. Oh, it's not dead. Baby, it's dead. It's dead, baby. All right, foul pals. Stay tuned. Okay, foul pals, so now we have my Phalaenopsis orchids that we are growing in water culture. Um, the only thing that I'm doing is just giving them distilled water. Sometimes I will give them tap water, but for the most part right now, it's either going to be reverse osmosis water or tap water until I can see root production growing. Now, the variation of me leaving them in this water will variate upon my feelings. Most of the time, I will leave them in here for just, um, for just a few hours. As you can see, the base of this is barely t um, touching, and the entire root is submerged in the water. Okay, now this flower stalk I am going to cut off. This is my um, rescue phalaenopsis that Danielle sent me. Okay, so thank you so much, Danielle. I'm doing the best that I can. She did lose a leaf um, since she has been here, but she did hydrate herself. She is very now very firm. She's still wrinkly, but I'm thinking that might be um, permanent damage or just because she only has one root to sustain her. Now, what I am foliar feeding my Phalaenopsis with is going to be some seaweed extract. And if you stay tuned, I will show you exactly what I'm doing with it, okay? Now, this Phalaenopsis over here has been in water culture for quite some time, and she is just now starting to make me feel a little concerned. The leaves are very droopy. I think it had been two days since I had watered her because sometimes I would leave them sitting in the water for a day. And so anytime that I leave them in the water for a day and then humidity or it's really rainy outside, I'll go ahead and let them skip a day because I would also foliar feed them. Now, as you can see, this flower stalk has been on here for all of this time and she is slowly eating herself but that is helping her sustain herself in this clear, purified water. This right here is also a Phalaenopsis that my foul pal Danielle sent me, and I am waiting on her to produce me some new roots. Now, as you can see, I did get her to hydrate. It is some stiffness to her leaves. Um, she might have lost a leaf. All of them um, pretty much had lost a leaf. But as you can see, foul pals, we have no mold growing. That blackness, I could clean it off. But because these are just some phalaenopsis that were already sick, I'm just doing the best that I can to practice on um, being patient and waiting to see new root production. Okay, now stay tuned. Okay, foul pals, so this is how I am sustaining my Phalaenopsis orchids that I am growing in water culture. I'm using the seaweed extract as a foliar feed, okay? 
I'm using it as a foliar feed because I'm trying to produce new roots for my Phalaenopsis orchids. I have it in a fine mist bottle, okay, as you can see. Many of you are misting in the daytime. You should be misting in the midnight hours. I typically mist anytime that I have to come downstairs to get a drink of water. So that can be anytime between 10 and 3 in the morning. Okay, that is when the Phalaenopsis orchid is receptive to receive nutrients through its leaves because it's making that gas exchange. Okay, now stay tuned for my cat, Leia. Yes, darling, this is my cat, Leia. And as you can see, the color of her is starting to lighten up since I have laid off of that Epsom salt. Okay, now she has not produced any blooms for me. This is a um, cat, Leia, that has never bloomed for me. You know how you buy those little packaged baby cat, Leia's. Um, however, she is growing honey successfully all of the roots that you see they are grown in my care and they were just produced um during this last season and i don't know the growth stages of the cat Leia, but the sheaths that were on it that i were telling you about they came off naturally by themselves um foul pal so it's not going to be something that you need to get tweezers and start fumbling around with although you want to keep in mind that this type of material is exactly what those fungus nets like but the kind that the fungus nets like is the kind that is already at the bottom of your pot so this is going to be perfectly fine but i mean just beautiful roots everywhere now what is this white substance on the outside of the pot well this is going to be a salt buildup okay foul pals now we are going to tackle this right here okay but in the meantime if you know any remedies okay to get rid of this substance off of my pot please leave that information in the comment box below and i will get to working on that video now stay tuned now i believe in the saying called each one teach one meaning that whatever i learn i teach to you guys and whatever you learn i might not know you would be surprised at what some things people might not know there's no such thing as a stupid question i don't believe in talking over your heads i believe that we should have a good time and talk about all of the things that we have learned along the way growing our phalaenopsis orchids so foul pal stay tuned darling Yes, darling. So, this is my Vanda Danielle that I am also growing by the method of water culture. Now, I did not get my baby a proper introduction, but you guys know this is my baby Danielle, okay? Now, she is now at the time where we are going to cut the stalk of this. Now, this is unlike a Phalaenopsis orchid that will produce offshoots and rebloom. So, this is something that we want to cut off and as you can see right here that is an old flower spike and right down there is an old flower spike so she has already been in bloom three times this year so she probably will not produce any more blooms unfortunately okay so yes foul pals honey yes honey we cut in spikes honey and starting over Get ready, honey. I can't wait to get me a new Vanda from, from the Redlands, honey. There we go. And so, foul pals, stay tuned, honey, and you will get to see my beautiful Pathio Petalum Jan. Guess what that is? Guess what it is, darling? Yes, honey. Mama got new growth. Mama got new growth. Mama got new growth. Mama got new growth. Yes, honey. This is my Pathio Petalum Jan that I am always telling you about. I am just so fatuated with my Pathiopetalums because through it all, honey, she is growing and growing strong, honey. Growing strong. Now, if you don't know anything about Pathiopetalums or dancing slippers, lady slipper, moccasin, however you may have heard of her, honey, I will leave an info card on how I count for her up above, darling. Now, I can see that this leaf is starting to die back. It's turning yellow. Now, I don't know the whole situation of what is going to happen next, but I am maintaining my Pathiopetalum 
by just leaving her alone. That is one of the roots right there, okay? And remember, they do not like for their roots to be exposed. So I'm gonna put her back in a pot and stay tuned, honey, and I'm gonna show you my dendrobium nobly. Now, foul pals, I thank you so much for tuning in. I thank you so much for artwork, sending me flowers. All of my foul pals starting to send me gifts and items, honey, I welcome it. And I welcome you to the People's Channel, darling. Now, I know a lot of you are not used to commenting on the videos, but honey, this is how we're going to communicate. Unless you want to join my Facebook group, my Facebook group called Foul Pals. That way we can send pictures to each other and everything. But honey, stay tuned. <laughs> Look, mama had to go handheld for this dendrobium nobly, okay? Now the flowers have dropped and um, already, honey, just new growth is everywhere. My foul pal, your niece, he tried to warn me. He said these things grow like weeds, and he was absolutely correct. Now, this moss, um, foul pal, your niece, and other foul pals, do you think I should take the time and go ahead and start messing around with this or just leave it be, okay? Because as you can see, this is new growth, all of this, darling. Look, this is new growth, honey. Look, everything that you see, this stuff grows. I mean, this grows so fast. And the sad part about it is this is not my favorite orchid. Look at all it is. Look, that's amazing. All of this is new. And I know you're like, oh, that's not your favorite. Um, now, for you um, name people. Um, number 74, Dendrobium, Angel Love Vivid, okay? And this is the little card that it came with. We will get into the care of a Dendrobium soon, soon, okay? But right now, it's not my favorite orchid. It's really hard trying to master the Phalaenopsis orchid. So I'm really spending a lot of time divulging into that. Now, th all of this right here, honey... You can tell because it's crinkly. All of this is me. I mean, this stuff is just growing and growing. I don't know what is it trying to prove. I don't know what's the next step. But, I mean, it is crazy, guys. It is crazy. So, all right, darling. That's my Dendrobium Nobly for you. Stay tuned so you can see my Uncidium. You know I got this from the Alabama Orchid Show. And she is producing new growth as well, darling. She is giving me new growth as well. All of this right here has happened in my care. It is not growing as fast as that Dendrobium nobly. Um, I actually don't know the growth stages of a Uncidium as well. Okay, for my name people. Wildcat Golden Red Star Uncidium Unstostylis, however you want to pronounce it. And this is going to be the root system, which is nothing fancy. Um, nothing fancy. Okay. Also, just before we go into another transition, this is my um, cactus. I think it's a Christmas cactus that my foul pal Danielle sent me. Now, um, guys, um, um, when sending these plants, honey, um... Um, let's stick to orchids, okay? Thank you, Foul Pal Danielle. I know you wanted to give me something with some blooms on it, and I, my husband loves it, honey. He loves it because she's in the bathroom and we could smoke around her, so he loves her. But, um, Foul Pals, let's stick to Phalaenopsis orchids, Uncidium orchids, um, and stay tuned, baby. Stay tuned because I am going to unravel. I am going to unravel and unveil. My beautiful, my beautiful new orchid. But you have to stay too. It's called a metonia. If I'm saying it wrong, help me out, foul pals. Each one teach one. No judgment zone. A miltoniopsis sun glow amazing. Okay. Now you can look that up to see what the blooms are. Because I still have not posted a video when I actually purchased it. Okay, foul pals, I'm trying to make my videos actually count instead of just posting and posting. Now, if you don't know anything about um, orchids, um, you can see down here 
that it has pseudobulbs so much so like the uncidium. Okay, I'm gonna have to get it out of here. I don't want to do too much damage because she is in bloom. That's why you guys haven't seen me doing a lot of taking pictures of it or even talking about it. Um, she is growing in some bark and some husk and I am watering her um, once a week and I am fertilizing her twice a month. Um, as you can see, we have another flower stalk right here that is growing. I'm doing very good not to bother her. You will not see me bother her after this, Val Pals. Uh, we have another bloom over here opening up for us. Now, she is going to have such a beautiful smell. I do not know how to describe the smell other than lemongrass, but I had some Caucasian friends that described it with a name that I'm unfamiliar with. But guys, when I tell you it is so... It smells so great. And I'm someone that suffers from seasonal allergies. Like right now, I am going through, honey, with all of this pollen. But this is an orchid that smells so beautiful and does not bother my allergies at all, Fab Pals. I actually purchased her because the sphagnum moss will sometimes leave a smell in your home that is not so pleasant. Okay? <laughs> so I'm hoping that this will kind of balance everything out. Also, before, I want you to see that this bud down here had some little blackness on it. Now, I don't know a lot about Montoniopsis. I will have to do my research. But guys, if you know anything, any useful information, leave it in the comment box below. And remember, on this channel, honey, it's Foul Pals. So if you leave a message, honey, you will get an immediate response. Immediate! So, honey, I want you to respond back to me. Let's talk about these orchids. Okay, Fal Pals, I love you so much, darling. Stay tuned. Until next time! The rest of my story is going to be the best of my story. You didn't want to believe that.